Hello there. I have designed a robotic mouth controlled by my typing. It's open source and this video is primarily about its development. Before we get into it I just want to mention really quickly these videos were filmed a few months ago before all the coronavirus stuff um, but right now I'm really struggling for time because of various reasons so if you've emailed me recently and I haven't gone back to you I'm really sorry and I'm trying to get through the backlog. So in case you couldn't tell I did have to adjust the footage a little bit to match the audio and sync it to my voice. But what I've tried to do with this project is make it as easy as possible to be able to match up the position of the mouth to a sentence that you type in. So the way it works is you type something into a program that I've written in Python, then that sentence is broken up to different sounds called phonemes, and then those are transferred to the Arduino, which poses it in sequence. So for the design of this animatronic mouth, I took inspiration from lots of different places, but my main sources of inspiration were, was firstly this 3D printed animatronic mouth that I saw a few years ago on the YouTube channel The Dutch Edition. And I wasn't really into animatronics that deep, at the time but when I saw that I was just fascinated by how I'd managed to fit all the different actuators so compact in the housing. Another source of inspiration which was really useful in this project was the Willa FX YouTube channel and Instagram page and on there there's quite a lot of different uh, animatronic mouth designs and there's some really interesting tutorials on how to make really realistic teeth so this was something that was really useful to me as well. And then another mechanism that I kept referring to was the Disney shaman animatronic uh, like avatar, like avatar blue guy. I don't want to get sued so I'll let you look that one up yourself but that was a really really complex and well engineered solution to an animatronic mouth and head. So my design is actually quite a lot simpler than all of the different things that I use as inspiration. In terms of degrees of freedom my mouth is quite limited but that's because I really wanted to focus on the sort of software side and the other thing I wanted to do was try and develop a mechanism for the tongue um, just so that I could bring something new to the table because all the things that I looked at didn't have this tongue. I also decided to use cat teeth just for a laugh really. I am really happy with the way they look but it does limit the design a little bit because it means that the tongue has to be quite narrow to be able to fit in between the teeth to make certain sounds like the th sound but I think it looks pretty cool. So first of all I just want to talk a little bit about the mechanics of this design and then I can go into the control and also the artistic elements like the teeth. In order to control the lips there are these four sort of like pincer type components and they move on a simple four bar linkage in order to move them up and down and they also protrude out slightly from the teeth. Um, in my initial design I had a different linkage structure which I designed to make the lips push out more um, as you would if you imagine making the letter O your lips come out quite a lot more um, they like push forward as opposed to when you make like the letter A obviously your lips stay tight to your teeth but this design was quite unreliable mechanically um, because of that linkage structure so in my redesign I had a little bit more of a robust linkage structure the corners of the mouth are controlled by two servos each which are able to position the pivot point of this simple 3D printed hinge into any position and most designs that I've seen do actually use that same system so that's something that I noticed on that Disney Shaman animatronic and also in the Dutch Edition animatronic mouth. One thing that some of those designs have that mine doesn't is that they have those servos angled inwards slightly so that when the corners of the mouth come forward they also come in inwards. I think that might improve the design slightly if I come to change it at all um, but would also make it less compact. Um, the jaw is just a really simple hinge um, using MG996R servos um, on both sides of the jaw um, which is probably way more torque than it actually needs uh, but this seems to work fine as a simple hinge jaw. Um, a lot of designs use a protrusive jaw movement which you can do with either two servos per pivot of the jaw. So in the way that I have my servos aligned I would actually need four servos um, to make the jaw protrusive. But then there's also some other alternatives like the ones that I've seen from Wilder FX and, and they actually have the motor sliding on a little bar with um, a linear bearing. So as I say, my design, I wanted to keep it simple because I wanted to focus on this control and software side, which I feel is really important. And finally, the tongue is just another four bar linkage similar to the lips, and it was designed so that the trajectory of the tongue um, comes up to sit on top of the bottom teeth. 
which is the position it needs to be in to make the TH sound and then it can retract and sit further back in the mouth. So now what I would consider to be the most important part of this project was the control. No matter how good the design is and how many degrees of freedom you have, if you don't have a reliable way to control it then it's useless obviously. So as I mentioned I tried to develop a system that would take an input from uh, a typed sentence and make it into phonemes which are individual sounds in words. So although this is where I spent the bulk of my time in this project, I still feel like I've only really scratched the surface and I would love to explore better methods of controlling it. Um, so although the way that it functions now is kind of like a text-to-speech generator, I did try to explore some kind of like live microphone lip-syncing software like the kind you might have in like a video game like VRChat or something like that, which I just couldn't get working well enough. What I would love to explore, which would be even much better than that, would be motion capture. And obviously that presents its own difficulties because of uh, the tongue in particular. It's really hard to motion capture the tongue. But I don't want to go into too much detail about the programming at this stage because there's tons of stuff to talk about. So now just a quick word on the like artistic elements of it. Um, the teeth in particular, I saw a video by Willa FX, who's an actual proper dental technician and he outlines a procedure for making real dentures for animatronic mouths um, from a 3D printed mould um, and going through the proper process of using dental acrylic to make a really high quality casting um, and that's something I wanted to do but at the time I couldn't find the materials although looking at it now it looks like it might actually be quite a bit easier to get a hold of than I thought but in any case I decided to look for some sort of cheaper and easier solutions so the first thing that I did was use the technique that I used on my Witcher 3 chart sculpture um, like three years ago or something. If you haven't seen that video, um, it's got hardly any views, but it's, uh, what I did was to sculpt teeth in Fimo and then harden the teeth just by themselves and then sculpt the gums around the hardened teeth. And this worked pretty well. But I think maybe I could get away with Fimo on a big sculpture like the chart that I did. But with something like this, um, which is much smaller scale, I wasn't able to get the level of detail that I wanted out of the Fimo. Um, I think it's better suited to sort of really tough, um, low detail applications. I think it's really good for making like beads and sort of jewellery, that sort of thing. But as for actually um, sculpting something with a lot of detail, um, Super Sculpey was a lot better. So on my second attempt, what I did was print the teeth on a sort of frame and I printed them in ABS and acetone smoothed them and then sculpted Super Sculpey around the teeth. And this worked out really well until I came to harden the Super Sculpey, at which point I found out that it's not a good idea to boil ABS that's being acetone smoothed. So then I went back and made the teeth frame once again um, but I did it in PLA this time just to be safe, even though I do feel that the ABS one looks quite a lot better. Uh, and then the tongue once again, I made a version with Fimo, I didn't like it too much and I also made a Super Sculpey version. Um, but again, I'm going to go over this in more detail because cause there's lots of little tidbits that I want to give you in a full video. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons. Um, the next video that I'm going to release is going to be about specifically how to build this design, how to 3D print it, and how to put it together. So I will see you in the next video.